Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're out of the pond again, as you can see, and we're out doing a little bit of algae mitigation, algae control, kind of preventative. It's not even preventative because we've already got algae growing. And so that's what this video is gonna be about today. And hopefully this is helpful because this is one of the number one questions that I see people, pond owners, trying to figure out how to control their algae. You can see this stringy, slimy, filamentous algae. It starts at the bottom and then just strings up the water column until you get these nasty floating mats. And a lot of people wanna know, how do I get rid of that stuff? Well, I'm here to help you today. We're doing a treatment of some phosphate binder. Our initial step here, because the water's still too cold to do the other treatments, but uh, here this early spring, we're binding the phosphates to reduce the amount of nutrients that are in the pond available for algae to feed on and grow and explode into these nasty algae blooms. And so go ahead and follow our channel. We're about ready to install the pump and the electrical to fire up the waterfall here this spring. That's been a year long process in the making. And so you've joined at the right time. And you just see all of that filamentous algae is just kind of hanging out at the bottom, starting to string up to the top. So in many ponds, this is the point when you see this stuff on the surface that you know you have an algae problem. But the reality is that you've had an algae problem long before that point. And this is where it starts, down here at the bottom with all this stringy, filamentous algae that's feeding off of the biomaterial, all of the excess leaves and debris in the bottom of the pond. And this creates excess phosphorus that algae thrive on. And so it's kind of like an iceberg, you know, you only see the very top 10% of it, but what's looming underneath is the enormous problem that you didn't know that you had. And so in this video, we're going to be applying a phosphorus binder to help remove the additional nutrients that algae need to survive. So this phosphate binder, you can apply any time of year as long as the water is liquid and not frozen over. Okay, so on a day like this similar, Last year, I launched the canoe from right here when we put the swans out last year for the first time. No, I'm going. I'm going. Yeah! Woo As a pond owner, now for almost two years, we're learning a bunch about all of the different chemical balances in a pond. And if you can see this, actually the sun's pretty good at right now. Look at, look at all of the algae that's stuck to the bottom. And so the best way to handle all of this is to mechanically remove this crap from the surface. A lot of people will spray algicide on top of this and that'll kill it. But what ends up happening is that that stuff then just sinks to the bottom and it lays there and it decays and it creates this vicious cycle where the next round of algae just grows right off of it. And so all you're doing is just repeating that cycle. If all, if all you do is spray your algae on the surface with an algicide, it sinks to the bottom. It looks okay for a little bit, but then that's what it looks like under there. And then it just explodes back in in greater force the next time then you can algicide again and it'll sink to the bottom and then it'll come up worse the next round and and that's kind of what you're creating so unless you're doing any kind of preventative measures and reducing the phosphorus in the pond you're just going to keep fighting a losing battle all of these leaves here in the bottom of this rock bed which is going to be our intake bay for the waterfall that's not good we got we got to get that crop out of there. Typically, you don't want to feed your fish in water temperatures that are less than 50 degrees. So after I just told you not to feed your fish in temperatures under 50 degrees, let's see. We've got some interested ones. See how close they come.
I'm gonna get a couple gallons of water in here. Like that. Get a again, this is a 15 pound bucket. I'm gonna use almost half of half of it. Oh, well look at that. That's that's what I'm talking about. Eight ounces. Stir this around a little bit. And again, there's no magic formula for this. You just really want to get this powder into the different areas dispersed around the pond. And so I'm just going to start by putting a little bit right there. Find those phosphates. Yeah, there we go. Get all that stuff up in there. Stir it up. Find those phosphates. You can apply this by walking around your pond and just throwing it around the edges periodically, but I paddled the boat around. It was more accessible, especially with the snow and it being slippery. The application rate calls for one pound of the powder per quarter acre. I more than doubled that because you can see I've got quite a bit of algae growing and I wanted to get ahead of it as the first application of the year. Oh hey look, we got a dead frog right there. Yet again, more decaying material that adds phosphates to your pond that algae thrive on and then this is what we're trying to prevent again it's just a cause and effect relationship that we're trying to get ahead of I'm pedaling through our slurry dispersing it throughout more of the pond Focusing here on our shallow areas because that's where the sunlight hits the algae. That's where most of it's growing. You can see our algae mats starting already here, just floating in the shallows. All right, so that's step one. We've applied the phosphate binder, the first application. And then as the water temperature rises above 50 degrees, we're gonna start the pond fit. And that's the beneficial bacteria application that we'll, we'll put in every two to four weeks. And then the muck away tablets, we're gonna work on um, breaking down the sludge even more so. So as part of our algae treatment plan, these are the products that we're gonna be working with, along with some algicide as necessary, and then also mechanical removal of the algae mats and the leaves and debris that we can get to. And so go ahead and follow our channel. You can see the progress that we make, and I'll show you how we apply this throughout the year. And hopefully this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead and give it a like, and we'll see you on the next one. Jeez. Got a couple of them up in the tree over here. These two toms are really presenting.
trying to impress the ladies. Look at these two guys. Those gobblers and the beards. I'm not a turkey hunter, but the rut is on.